Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. We have a really exciting episode today. Noah Tishby is here. Uh, she is the uh, big Israel advocate. She was just profiled in the New York Times, and we talked to her. Uh, some news on the book. I am switching publishers. We did not really get along. These are things that happen. I'm not a huge fan of people editing me, so um, we're trying to work it out where we can keep some of the, pre the pre-sales. I don't know if we can, so you all may get refunded, and then just there'll be no other pre-sales. You just come buy the book when it's out in the spring. Um, but we couldn't really hammer out an agreement on what I wanted. So, um, that's the way it is. You know, it's like, Hey, who cares? Um, so go out. We'll see. You. I'll do a little book tour in the spring. We'll be out talking about the book. Uh, this is an interesting episode. Noah knows a lot about Israel. She's a fierce advocate of Israel and a staunch defender of Israel. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that will agree with her. And there's a lot of people that will disagree with her. It's a very good conversation, very respectful. I appreciate her taking the time to speak with us. So without further ado, here is Noah Tishby. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. Special guest here, Noah Tishby. Uh, I pronounced that right. Yep. Um, I became aware of you a few weeks ago when you were on your Instagram page uh, talking about what's going on in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Um, and I read a little bit about you. You are a very accomplished person. Um, you worked for Benjamin Netanyahu's government? Nope. No? Well, that's for br very briefly, but we'll get to that in a second. Okay. But I wasn't completely. Mm, I'm not I, completely I was wrong. appointed. I was appointed. So I'm an I'm a, I'm Israeli-American. I was born, born and raised in Israel. Um, I was a, a, an actress and a producer. I, first, I brought the first television show to the United States and treatment, uh, sold it to HBO. It was the first television format to ever make it to Israel, to America from Israel. I have been an Israel advocate and a Jewish advocate and worked in the anti-Semitism space for a very long time. I started the first online advocacy and rapid response organization uh, in 2011. And in um, last year, I was appointed by Yair Lapid, actually, uh, to be Israel's first special envoy for combating anti-Semitism and delegitimization. And I worked for the Lapid Bennett government, which was the quote unquote, the good government in terms of the um, uh, American kind of left and progressives. And uh, then the new government got in, which is much more uh, right wing and much more religious. And I still said I was going to, I wanted to continue working because I feel like the space of anti Semitism is more important than any politics. And then I criticized the uh, attempt in a judicial overhaul in Israel. And was relieved from my position. So I can I I can say that I worked for the Netanyahu government for a couple of months. Briefly. Very briefly. And you were dismissed. I was dismissed, yeah. So you were a critic of the right-wing, uh, what you felt was right-wing overreach of mm -hmm. the Netanyahu yeah. government. Yeah, which is, okay. which is the perfect example of how you can, you can criticize Israeli government policies while acknowledging that Israel has the right to exist right. as a Jewish state, which is what we are actually here to discuss. Right. The, what in your situation. estimation, what has the media gotten wrong about the narrative Oof. about what has happened since the Hamas attack? Oh, the question is, what did the media get wrong in the past like 25 years or, or even more? So first of all, let's go back for a second. On October 7th, Israel was invaded not by like a couple of cute terrorists, which is when we say a terrorist attack, you kind of think, you know, five, six, 10, 19, like we had here in September 11th. What people need to understand is that Israel was invaded by nearly 3,000 terrorists, not give or take. So it's a battalion. It's essentially a military that attacked Israel from the south, broke the border down, and uh, invaded cities and towns and kibbutzim with the clear orders to murder, slaughter, rape, torture, and kidnap as many people as they possibly can. The stories, the photos, the videos that are coming out of it. So they not only did they create, like they caused the greatest slaughter and massacre on the Jewish people since the Holocaust in one day. So 1,500 now people, men, women, and children were, were slaughtered that day. The level of barbar barbarism and sadism is beyond the pale, and they filmed it. So their intention was to show the world and the Jewish community what it is that they're capable and willing to do. I can't, there's, there's, 
the, the beheading of babies, the burning of families up alive. There was a, I'm, I'm sorry to be graphic, but I'm, I'm just going to have to be. There's a, there was a 30 year old woman who was pregnant. They sliced her belly open. They pulled out the fetus, fetus and they beheaded that fetus such that they literally, I mean, the it's sto- inhuman and barbaric, torturing yeah. families next to the children. Pull, like it's unbelievable. Right. Right. And this is something that Israel has been dealing with in a very small scale for a very long time. So there's this culture of radical Islam, radical Islamic Nazism, basically, that is not interested in what we in the West think that they're interested in. So what they're not interested is a two-state solution. What they're not interested is um, living peacefully side by side. What they're not interested in anything that we hold dear as our Western values. And this is one of the things that I've been trying to warn for, against for a very long time, and a lot of us has, because we, you, th- you think that you can, the, the American, um, specifically like the left, right, is creating some sort of a projection. They're projecting their values on the region. And they're saying, oh, well, certainly everybody just wants to live in peace. Like right. certainly every mother just wants the children to grow up and have a great future. And as a liberal living in America, when I moved from Israel to here, it was very challenging for me to see that a lot of people don't get that. They don't get that. No, not everybody has the same culture. So, but this is also for many, many years. No, to, to answer your question yeah. about the media, yeah. The re- I also um, uh, I wrote a book a, few, a couple of years ago. It came out, and it's it's called Israel: A Simple Guide to the Most Misunderstood Country on Earth. And the reason I wrote that book is because I realized that there was no no book that tells the story of Israel in a way that's easy to understand. That's like fun. That's funny. God forbid, right? right. And I literally wrote that book because the media was getting Israel wrong all the time. And that is, I mean, the book is selling again really well and people are finding it now because everything that's happening right now, including the media, including universities, including all of it is, is written in the book because it's been something that I've been working on for a long time. There has been and is an anti-Israel media bias that as an Israeli and an American Jew, right, is kind of funny when people keep blaming the Jews for having a media cabal. Well, aren't there a lot of Jews that work in the media? A lot of Jews working in a field doesn't equate control of the field. No, for sure. So here's yeah. where anti-Semitism jumps in, which right. is anti-Semitism is anti-Jewish racism. It's where you have this subconscious bias against the other, a people, right? right? Blacks and Asians and whatever. You're kind of right. like suspicious about them. Gotcha. With anti-Semitism, it's not simple racism. So it's not, you don't, don't just look down at something or someone, you look up at them a little bit. So anti-Semitism in essence is a shape-shifting conspiracy theory. And the conspiracy theory sounds like, yeah, these fucking Jews, they control everything. Right. Right? So when you think to yourself, for real, that the Jews control everything, and a lot of your viewers and listeners right now are like, well, don't they? That is a conspiracy theory. And that is what allows later on for your opinions to be uh, about Israel to be completely skewed. Right. So if you think that the Jews control everything, then of course Israel is the big bad wolf because it's like the Jews control everything. Right. And we're sitting there going, we are the worst fucking cabal in the world. Now it was very funny to some extent, but now it's not funny anymore. Well, no, for sure. But is, it, is there a space, like you said, to be critical of maybe the settler program? Sure, or you can criticize The expansionism Listen. of, uh, you know, moving Tim, into- Tim, yeah. here's the thing. Yeah. You can be a Republican, a Democrat, a Libertarian, it doesn't matter what, right? Yeah. None of us love the policies of putting kids in cages, right? In the border. Right. Nobody. Well, it right? was liberal Jews have been the ones who've advocated on behalf of having a lot of- Immigration. Wait, 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 wait. Pause, pause for a second. That's another, wait just a second. Nobody is for any, there are policies in America that we don't love, right? Sure. Nobody's talking about dismantling America. Right, but I don't think any serious people are talking about dismantling Israel. You think so? Are you seeing what's happening on colleges? I literally had the same argument with Bill Maher and he's like, no. And I'm like, colleges have gone insane. But that's the young American minds that are going around and saying from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. And they're saying something like this. And this is something that I've noticed like 10 years ago, right? The conversation about Israel in certain circles turned from policies, Bibi Netanyahu, yes or no, settlements, yes or no, policies, which is totally legit to have a conversation about. There's something that sounded like this, right? Yeah, but like, is Israel a real state though? Or is it like a colonialist settler's endeavor that needs to be dismantled? And that is something 
that it can't we can't allow to happen. It Israel's do, the only yeah. country that you have a debate on whether or not it should exist. It's I don't, insane. I don't know of any serious person that I know of that has said Israel doesn't have a right to exist. You're I'm absolutely not, right, because the not, normal people that yeah. actually have education know this, but you watch the ones that are ripping the posters yes, of the kidnapped kids. they're crazy people, but these are also the people lot. that tell us there's 1,500 genders and I have to learn a new language to talk to them. <laughs> How's everyone enjoying this episode? Are you enjoying the episode? Don't be angry. <laughs> About whatever you're angry about. <laughs> um, people lose their hair. This is something that happens. We know this. In a war zone or not, they lose their hair. Sucks. Um, I lost all of my hair, and then I used something called keeps, and it all came back. Well, no, but seriously, a lot of my friends... Uh, have lost their hair and they've been able to, they had great success with this product. Two out of three men are going to experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35. More than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness. So there's something called Keeps. Okay? It is an expert recommended hair loss treatment. It has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. You get the quality expert care without ever visiting a doctor's office for a pharmacy. Easily subscribe to Keeps and get refill reminders so you'll never run low on the product you need to take care of your hair. 24-7 care and support. Low cost. It's cheap. But it's good. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just take better care of the hair you have, Keeps has you covered. Remember, prevention is key. You want to stop the hair from being lost. Preempt. Preemptively strike. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tim Dillon to receive your first month of treatment for free. And this is great. If you want to do this, it really helps the show out to, to go here and, and use this. Not only does it work, but it helps um, keep um, everybody happy with us over at the Keeps brand. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tim Dillon to get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Tim Dillon. Jewish people historically have voted for Democrats. Still do. And the Democrats have been very pro-immigration. Okay. And recently there have been a lot of, um, you know, protests mm -hmm. happening, uh, you know, not only in America, but in places like Australia, mm -hmm. where they yelled gas the Jews outside yes, of the, the Sydney Jews. Opera House. So what's By the way, just yeah. so you're clear, it's a massacre that occurred in the Jewish people that people yeah. on the left are asking for more massacre. Why are the Why are Jewish people so devoted to the Democratic Party when the Democratic Party says we're going to bring every culture into America no matter what their feeling is towards Jews or what their values are or whether they like Western culture or not. Why why have the Jewish people historically been so pro-Democrat? Well, I can't answer to immigration specifically because yeah. everybody knows from the Democrats or Republicans, everybody knows that uh, we need to have some sort of an immigration reform. There's no question about that. Wow. Although I got to say that saying that there's no immigration system that's based on merit is also insane right. because I came into the country based on an immigration system that's based on merit. I had to prove that I was, it's called extraordinary in this field. Okay. That's how I got my citizenship which I'm a very proud American too. So, you know. I do think that, I do you think, think it's that, a little far though to, I understand, listen, college kids are nuts. Do you think it's a good idea when you have the CEOs of companies coming out and going, I want a list of all the college kids who went to the protest. I want a list of everybody who signed this letter to the Harvard uh, Crimson Can or whatever. Can I tell you something? Because it does seem like it's a, a cabal little- cabal behavior. Well, it does seem overly paranoid, mm -hmm. and it does seem like I it, I completely understand where it comes from, but I don't think it's the right course of action to take because it feels, again, it feeds into the idea- Of a uh, cabal, of a control, of a- Yeah, yeah. it's people going, I want to know everybody who's ever disagreed with me, and if a dumb kid is 19 and goes to a protest, should they never get a job or I should gotta, they be blacklisted? I got to tell you, all I'm for is equal opportunity. Okay. And what we have seen as the Jewish community in the past, like- few years, right? Is that every marginalized community is getting uh, protected, is getting, people are, are uh, sensitive about it. There's no microaggressions towards any other marginalized community. Everybody's very sensitive. But when it comes to the Jewish community, when it comes to um, Israel, which is protected under Title VI, right? right. Of the human right, of the, of the Civil Rights Act, right? 
all bets are off. So right now what's happening is the pendulum is going to the other direction. Look, am I for any kind of naming names? I'm absolutely not. But right. if somebody said something anti um, uh, racist or anti or, or xenophobic or anti or misogynistic, they're going to get repercussions. And up until now, if somebody said anything anti-Semitic, there were no repercussions. So I'm I'm all for equal opportunity. If you're doing this for any other minority, you do that for the Jews as well. Because let's just, do you know how many Jews there are in the world? What the percentage of Jews in the world? Me? Yeah. Do I know how many do. Jews? Yeah, you, you have to know. You don't? I would do. say it's 10% of 10 the- 10% of the population. That would of be the world my, population? Maybe 3%. I, I grew up in Long Island, and now I live in Beverly Hills. Okay. So my answer when somebody says, how many Jews are, it's always too many. Because I come from Long the Island. The percentage and Beverly of Jews Hills. in the world yeah. is 0 0.18. That's wild. There are, okay, let me say this. That's very few. 14.9 or 15.1, depend on who you're count or what you're counting, million Jews in the world. So let's just go 15, right? Right, that's it, wow. That's it. It's less than the population of LA. That's it. Yeah. That's it in the right. entire universe. And Jew in the Israel's the only Jewish state. Israel's the only Jewish state. There are 21 Arab state. Give us a fucking break. That's what we've right. been saying. We're like, relax on this. We are a minority. We are a marginalized Is it okay community. to look at the context of it? Like, I fully think that the Hamas attack was barbaric and that Israel has a right to defend itself. That's 100% the case. Right. Does Israel have the right to exist? I believe so. Great. Then, by I the way, so. to your viewers, you're a Zionist. Well, I don't ah. know. Well, but here's the thing I will ah. say. You're just afraid Israel of that word. Has to also- hang on, hang on. You just Let's just talk about that word for a second. Because right. that word was taken away from us to mean something different. But they won't let me host a daily show. Why? I don't know. But if they do, I'll be a Zionist. But what they won't. What does that have to do with anything? They won't even give me a test. They won't even give me a test. How now? Run. How come? What? Why not? I don't know. What does that have to do Go with being a Zionist? Go talk to the cabal. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> talk to the cabal. I mean, my, my, I, but the can I tell you one more yeah. thing? I've been saying this for like two years. I've been yeah. joking. I'm like, they keep saying we have a cabal. May as well start acting like but we fucking do. But the thing is, the, so the thing about being a Zionist is like, I, I'm not an evangelical Christian because I'm not going out there being like, you believe in Jesus. To me, Zionism is like this weird evangelism uh -huh. where it's like you're going out and telling people all the time. Isn't that what it kind of is? Absolutely not. But oh. I love that we're having this conversation. Well, I didn't know people, what it is. I've noticed in the past like decade or so yeah. that people are saying Zionism as if it's like some sort of an evil. Zionism is the Jewish people's right for a state. That's it. Okay. That's all it is. In a little bit more um, kind of elaborated but is way. But is it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it inherent in that the Jewish people's right for the state to be wherever Israel no. wants it to be and wherever I'll the borders are? Absolutely not. The okay. Zionism is a movement for Jewish liberation and self-determination in some parts of their ancestral land in a Jewish, not an exclusively Jewish state. So okay. it was never supposed to be an exclusively Jewish. It's but it not is, now. It is, but it is pretty much an ethno state now. No, it isn't. There are 21% of Arab Israelis, of Arab Israelis, Palestinians living within Israel. But they're Jewish. Is, no, they're Muslims and Christians. And they have full voting rights. Full voting rights. That's the other That's the other bullshit. Well, I'm just saying what's out You're there. You're amazing. I'm, that's why I'm coming this on the show. what's out there. Listen, I'm coming on a comedy show in the middle of a war, so obviously that's it's right. important, right? <laughs> right, right. You know, and I'm not, I'm not making light of anything, no, right? No, of course. Israel's the only country in the, in, the, in the Middle East where Christian population is growing. Okay. Israel's not an apartheid state. That was something that has been, con like the, po the populate people are gonna be watching this right now and their mind's gonna go, ka by yeah. the way, I told you this before, but get ready for a lot of hate. Well, listen, the, the reality hate. is so, I, when people come on, I let them say what they're gonna say because this is- But this, I love, you gotta push I've, back on Padme. I am pushing back yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit, but- I believe in in the the ability of anybody to go and speak freely. Yes, and that's what I've always believed. That's what I built my career on. So, very ha so let me go back to the apartheid. There's people that are not agreeing with you, let and there's people to, that are agreeing with you. Let me go back to the apartheid stage because your viewers and listeners are going to freak out right now. Okay, right within the green line, within the state of Israel, what is defined as what is the state of Israel? There are equal rights, one one person, one vote. There are Arab Muslims on the Supreme Court bench. There's a Supreme Court judge who's an Arab. A Supreme Court judge has sentenced the former president of Israel to jail. There are 21.8% of uh, doctors and nurses in Israel are Arabs. Arab Israelis have the same rights as Jews. Okay? Now, Gaza is not even occupied by Israel at all. Right. So Gaza was, that was supposed to be Palestine, number one. The West Bank is a military control on hold being waiting to negotiate some sort of a peace with the Palestinians. 
So when you talk about Israel as an apartheid state, you are 100% wrong. If you want to talk about what's happening in the West Bank, that's a whole other conversation. Well, the people in Gaza cannot leave. Well, of course they can't leave. Right. Because Hamas is not letting them out even through Rafiach, through Egypt. Right, but they're, they're living in this place that is kind of like a prison. 100%. They're existing in these horrible conditions. 100%. Israel has limited the type of supplies that can go in there you know historically. Why? You know why? I don't. Because for years we've been saying yeah. that Hamas is taking the supply to build tunnels, to arm, to, and look at what happened. Yeah. You know, right now that they, they found out the Hamas is holding gasoline, not giving it to the population, right. not letting them leave. Didn't Israel fund Hamas and didn't they want Hamas instead of the PLO because Hamas was more extreme and easier to delegitimize, whereas the PLO was pushing for a two-state solution? Has Israel always been interested in a two-state solution or is their support of Hamas signaling that they actually don't want a two-state solution? They'd rather this crazy terrorist group controlling Gaza so that they never have to have a two-state solution. A lot to unpack there. So um, Israel, uh, is lo with, along with Hamas, with Qatar, with the U.S., everybody kind of fell into Hamas pretend game. So Hamas in their charter is very clear, and I talk about this in my book, that the, what they're after is destroying the Jewish state, jihad on all the Jews, slaughter all the Jews except for the ones that are hiding behind the Jewish tree, and then the tree and the stone are going to say, oh, there's a Jew behind me. Like, it's ridiculous. It's a joke. It's almost, it's like a joke, their charter. But that's what they're after. In recent years, they've been playing a game of like, no, 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 you can work with us. It's fine. Uh, we're, you know, we'll, we'll be okay. And Israel mistake, mistook this, like literally made the mistake of thinking that they actually want to rule the Palestinians, that they're actually interested in some sort of a normality. And they were not. This was a ploy in order to destroy Israel and what they did in the process is sacrifice Gaza. Does and it's Hamas not for nothing, did by Hamas the way. believe they could destroy Israel? Israel's so... They had yeah. a plan. But they, Israel has so much military supremacy. That's it seems true, but they did a very... Hamas they, would they did believe a they could very, destroy them. First of all, they slaughtered 1,500 Israelis and mutilated bodies and raped women. So to yeah. them, this is a big win. Right? Yeah, and it's very... It's, it's in, in, incredible they were able to do that. Unbelievable. It's and, unbelievable. And is there a massive investigation in Israel now massive as to how that happened? Look, the, yeah. the military, everybody woke up. The military yeah. is like this, it's, it's on the offense. It's everybody, everybody woke up. This was a very, 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 very well planned, op planned operation. I said this from the beginning. I'm like, yeah, Hamas, they, they, uh, they put a good effort. They put a really good effort. Good for them. But you know who else put a good effort in destroying the Jews? Germany? Exactly. Right. The Nazis also put a good fucking effort. And you know right. who else? In the Inquisition days, they also put a good effort. So every few years, some evil shit people try yeah. to put a good effort to exterminate the Jews, and it never in the long term works. But this was a big thing. And also remember, this is Israel and Hamas and the whole region. Hamas is a pawn of Iran, and right. Iran sacrificed Hamas. When people Hamas. say though, that Israel funded Hamas, what are they talking That's about? That's bullshit. Israel funded okay. Hamas. It was like Israel allowed Hamas through Qatar to get money because they thought they're going to rule Gaza because there are two million people there, and Israel is trying to help them to rule these people. And you honestly, any anymore, it, it's not the responsibility of Egypt, any of it was of, uh, that, Israel that anymore. Uh, Israel might have known just the same way that we funded the Soviets against, uh, I'm sorry, we funded Al-Qaeda yeah, Al against the Soviets. Yeah. Is there any part of Israel thinking when they're allowing Hamas or, or to uh, get money or funding Hamas, are they going like, we would rather the representatives of Palestinians be these crazy terrorists instead of like legitimate people? It's very, it, look, there were elections and Hamas won. Right. So you, Israel was given two entities. Kind of right. going, could you guys unite into right. one? Look, at the establishment of Israel, there was the Haganah, the Etzel, and the Lechi. There were three separate kind of entities in the Yeshuv, in the Jewish Yeshuv, that were uh, kind of like militant in their ways and, and trying to build a state in their ways. And David Ben-Gurion, as soon as the state was funded, he's like, done with everything, enough with all of this, everybody underneath the IDF, everybody underneath one government, one voice, one Jewish people, because the commitment of the Jewish people was always to have a state. It wasn't to destroy anybody else. And Hamas's commitment is destroying the Jews. Right. They are not interested. Hamas is, is insane, and we, we, we know that. It, and and they, they've you know. put the entire Arab world now in, in trouble because this is well, also Iran yeah. sacrificed them. Basically, they are the, yeah. the, 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 the you know, the there is, Sunni. Slavo Zizek, had a, he came out and he said, listen, the attack is barbaric. Israel has a right to defend themselves. He goes, let me. But he also said... There does seem to be a, a knee-jerk reaction where we can't look at context, and mm -hmm. context never 
justifies anything, right? Yeah. But there's the context of where this comes from. Yeah, I, I com- disagree with this vehemently. Well, okay, but because I'm just saying what's out there. I'm saying what's I out am, there. I, that's why I'm here. Pe- pe- I understand yeah. when you talk about context, when you talk about pe- people from Ramallah um, protesting peacefully and, and saying, let's build NGOs and let's build a government. That's okay, because what they're after is what the Jewish Yeshuv was after, which is a state. They're right. after building something for themselves. Sure, Hamas is just not interested in that. So I don't think Hamas is interested in that. So, and I, so and I agree no, with there's you. There's no context. What but they I want, think the context is not. It's that there's two million Palestinians that are not necessarily in Hamas. That's, right. That's the excuse. Is the occupation? Quote well, unquote. They're, they're but living, again, there's right. no occupation in Gaza. They this could have right. been Singapore. Israel has left Gaza, but the the settlements, the Israeli settlements that are being built. Where. The, they're built well. Golan Heights, a bunch of places, right? Golan I mean, is, Heights is is a is a done deal. But the 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 whole idea is that the UN has been roundly critical of Israeli settlement. You're talking building. about the West Bank. You're not yes. talking about Gaza because there are no settlements in Gaza. By when the way, when Israel Gaza. when Israel left right. Gaza, unilaterally yeah. pulled out of Gaza well, in 2005. Yes. We left right. houses and greenhouses and farms, and we left everything. And well, you know what you Hamas did with them? Yeah. yeah. They yeah. burned them down. Because when we hear about Palestinians going, hi, I'm being evicted from my home. I have this deed that says I've owned this home. I'm being evicted from it. We're talking about Hawara. We're talking about all that stuff, right? Well, we're talk- let's right. be specific. I know we'll, what you're talking we'll about. We'll be specific. Mm-hmm. This is what Israel's criticized for throughout the world. And listen, I'd rather live in Israel. It's much nicer. It, it's more progressive. We know that. We know, you know that who the else values are to live in Israel. Uh, gays, women, everybody. Eighty-six percent of Arab Israelis say that they sure. do not wish to live in a Palestinian state. Should one get, get theocracy created. is never the the form of government that of I Arab choose. Israeli Palestinians prefer to stay living in right. Israel than live in a Palestinian state. Should right. one get but created. the issue of settlements, mm-hmm. the issue of the expansionist nature of the state of Israel, is this something that? You is there anything that you can see? Do you go? We've made mistakes, or things have happened that shouldn't have happened. Absolutely. Okay. Again, you know why? Because okay. Israel is the country, and countries make mistakes. That's now, right. When not you- America, <laughs> <laughs> not us. Again, just, just by the way, it not clear. they're trying to what they're trying to do. All these like the, these protest movements right now that are yelling and screaming about the occupation. They're not right. talking about occupation sixty seven which is the West Bank and the settlement. They're talking about the whole thing. Exactly. They're right. talking they about don't occupation want to 1948. Right. They're trying to relitigate right. the war of 1948 that Israel didn't want, didn't start, and won. Right. Right after the Holocaust. Okay? Right. So that's number one. In terms of the settlement, when you read my book, you understand exactly where I stand yeah. politically. Do I think the settlements are great? No. Do I think that they're a red herring? Fuck yeah. Okay. Because you're talking about expansionism. Okay, right. and you still have to understand that even in the West Bank, which is a disputed state, it's still under military control. It never was annexed by Israel, not even under the right wing government. So everybody's aware that that is kind of like a limbo area, right? Ninety percent of the Palestinians live under Palestinian rule at the areas A and B, right? And in terms of numbers, it's not that expansionism when there are about 40, 450 or four hundred ninety-five thousand Jews there and two point nine million right. Arabs. So it's not that expansionism. It's just that. Every time you hear about this deed, you kind of go, a deed, right? right? And people don't understand. Americans are kind of like, what's with that deed? And it's terrible. Well, Ameri- Israelis like, listen, are if somebody, if somebody kicking was people living, out of their homes. Well, this is, this is, if somebody was living in some, a place that they mm-hmm. owned and they had proof of ownership. Well, do they though? I've, I've seen things where they've had deeds saying they own the house. But even if they didn't have deeds, the idea that you can just go and evict somebody from a house and, and make them homeless... That is seen as horrible. Is seen as a war crime and horrible. violation of international law. It's a, it's a hundred percent horrible. But yeah. again, when you're talking about Hawara specifically, is a land dispute. It's a it's an ownership dispute. There well, are they're two all groups, land disputes, right? Two I mean, groups there the that, are, that are that yeah. are that are pretty extreme in their positions, and they're right. trying to duke it out. And they know that this is going to cause international uproar. And again. I'm not even talking in this conversation and the conversations that we're having right now, because remember, there's a war going on in Israel right now, right? right? I'm not even talking about who did what and what the land, this has nothing to do with it. This is about people that want to exterminate Jews, period. For sure, I was just, uh, for sure. I was just saying that there is- all of this murkiness- This has been unending for a long time. As long as I've grown up, we've always heard about violence in the Middle East, two-state solution, getting close, never quite getting there. And why are we never getting there? I would say that it just, the deal hasn't been made. Why wasn't it made? 
I don't know. We got very close, right? Didn't we get very close with Clinton under very, Yasser Arafat? We got very, very close. close. Yasser Arafat was on the plane in order to sign the deal. He received 96% of everything that he got, and he landed in D.C. and decided to, and, and Camp David, and said, I'm not signing. So when you look historically at what happened with Israelis in Palestine, and again, I am I come from a liberal household, like a right. very progressive household, actually, right? Right. So when you look at the history of this, and you see how many times Israel offered a Palestinian state and how many times it was re rejected. And you realize that the Palestinians, as a national movement, have practiced rejectionism. And you kind of go, well, what do they want then? And you go, oh, well, here's the thing. If the Palestinian as a national movement, first of all, need to be called out to be a bit more responsible. That's number one. And number two, if the Palestinians would have actually been interested in a two-state solution. I'm sure that conversation could have been had. Is it a specific piece of land that they are refusing? Is it a two-state solution? Is it just that they don't want Israel to exist? Is that they, the whole? I'm, I'm not yeah. saying they, because it's not everyone. It's a certain sect of people. But sect, if you yeah. say from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Then it means no Israel. That means exterminating and ethnically cleansing the Jews from their ancestral land, from the yeah. Jordan River right. to the Mediterranean Sea. And we saw what that looks like. That looks like It's a pogrom. It's, it's right. a pogrom, exactly. It's a pogrom. Yeah, no, I, for, for sure. Israel right now preparing a ground uh, incursion Campaign. into Gaza, potentially. Thomas Friedman, writer at the New York Times, other people who are traditionally historically pro-Israel feel like it might be a trap. It might be a quagmire. It's similar to Iraq. It's, it's always a, a very quagmire densely, in the Middle East. Very densely populated urban warfare. What is the end game there? I mean, I think there's something about eight or 10,000 Palestinian civilians supposedly have been killed, according to the ministry there. I don't know. Which I will take with, with a grain of salt, and I'll hurt for every child who is uninvolved. Yes. I mean, there's, we'll it's hard, take... there's a ton of innocent Palestinians who've died, just like a ton of innocent Israelis who've died. Don't argue that. Um It's at, horrible, by the way. But again, the difference is the intentionality of of, of breaking into people's homes and slaughtering and mutilating them. One, to I will agree with you. Collateral you, damage yeah. of war, which is horrible. Right, but when you are flattening and leveling whole sections mm -hmm. of a city, you are aware also that you're going to kill civilians. I mean, this is true. Listen, this is, I'm... Yeah. <laughs> I'm, nobody is for war. Right. And, again, Iran, yeah. by training Hamas the way that they did and arming them and paying them and protect, you know, creating this entire kind of entity, has basically sacrificed Gaza. Because this operation, everybody that's involved that planned it and executed that knew the price that Gaza is going to pay. When There's is, no other right. choice. When Israel it, says, And by the way, when 9-11 yeah. when happened, yeah. we didn't know where the terrorists were. I think, And we know where they are now. We've made a lot of mistakes since 9-11. Exactly. And I think we there's a lot of were. advocates of Israel that say they wouldn't want Israel to go down the same path that the United sure. States went down, where... We got into unwinnable wars, spent trillions of dollars. We left Gaza for a reason. Committed human we rights abuses. We didn't want to be in there. Yeah. We didn't want to be in there. We right. were like, here you go. Here are the keys. Go build yourself a home. Build Is, a does state. Does any part of this ground uh, offensive concern you in Very terms of much the so. objectives and what the reality of it is and what would be considered a victory? It concerns me very much, also from personal level, um, on a personal level, because I know people who uh, will be. Uh, operating this uh, ethereal ground operation. So right. I'm very personally invested in it. There is no other option other than to eliminate Hamas. There is just no other option. What does option. that look like? It's a good question. We don't know, but I'm sure the United States and Europe and normal countries will have to help, help the Palestinians make good choices for themselves too. When Israel the tells future. the Palestinians leave this area or mm -hmm. evacuate because they don't really have anywhere to go, is that somewhat disingenuous? They do have places to go. Hamas doesn't let them go. It's not. This right. is horrible, Tim. I'm yeah. not here to defend war in right. any level. But no, but these are these are the questions that people are asking. Sure, it's absolutely. not. It's not simply. Uh, you I know, totally me. It. It's these are the questions that people are asking, and these are questions that I think uh, people are concerned about. They're yeah. concerned about. Does this increase anti-Semitism throughout the world? Does it uh, make Israel first of all here, less here, safe? Here's yeah. the thing. So Israel gave Gaza two days warning, okay? Right. Hamas didn't give Israel two minutes. No, the, Hamas is a barbaric so, terrorist organization. So, so we can't compare the government. You know, we're trying not to do We don't want to get into that moral equivalence, right? Right, because they're 
right. isn't. Hamas, there is no moral yes. equivalence there. So and we're the not sad even, part about right. it, I don't know if you've seen, there are photos of Hamas blocking civilian cars, not letting them evacuate. This is not a good thing, but you, have you seen the recent uh, reports about the Shifa hospital? Uh, okay, so that is the hospital that we, it would claim that an Israeli missile hit no, or no, no, no. There are two, airstrike. Two, there are two stories about the hospital, about okay. two different hospitals. Hospital number one is the airstrike that happened last week um, that immediately there was a push notification on every news magazine. Israel bombed the hospital. Israel bombed the hospital and 500 people died within a second. So of course we're all like, oh my God, Israel does not fucking bomb hospitals. And then you look back and you realize it was a misfailed, um, um, mislaunch rocket of Islamic Jihad that landed in a parking garage and BBC still has the tweet that says that Israel did it still up, well, there right? Is, there That's are, number one, but hang right. on. The, the other thing is um, that they just revealed yesterday that Hamas headquarters is located underneath the biggest hospital in Gaza. Well, Shifa get, Hospital, right. 40,000 displaced people are there and there's a Hamas terrorist that they interrogated that speaking, the, the, all the visuals are online of saying, yeah, we, we place our headquarters underneath hospitals and but clinics because we know has, Israel's not gonna do. bomb there. Yes. That's what they do. But, yes. but Israel, I, I imagine, has had to bomb schools and hospitals to Never get Hamas. bombed schools and hospitals. Never? Never bombed schools and hospitals. I mean, Never I, intentionally well, that's, and I believe you, will, but I had Barry Weiss on the show going, we will, have to bomb schools We and have hospitals. to bomb when they're clean yeah. and clear. Israel's never okay. going to bomb a hospital when there are people there. Right. So but we, now you make there's sure a they're headquarters. Empty under, down? It's a big okay. problem. Sure. It's a big problem. And, and here's the thing. Israel never started a war. Right. Hamas always broke ceasefires. Israel always had to win a war because right. the only one Jewish state, like that's the yeah. reality. Israel wants peace. I know it's hard for people to understand because they're like, Israel's the big bad wolf, but like- I don't think it's people that are saying Israel's a big bad wolf. I think people are looking at the situation and going, what happened to Israel was terrible. What happened in, on 9-11 was terrible. The United States after 9-11 went out and did a lot of things that probably made us less safe. We went to the wrong country. Certainly in the short term. And, yeah, and, we went to the wrong and place. And hurt our credibility worldwide. Sure. Guantanamo Bay, these underground sure. torture prisons, uh, you know, not following the Geneva Conventions, uh, these unilateral wars that enriched, you know, maybe defense contractors, but didn't make, sent a wave of refugees throughout Europe. Sure. Destabilized the political situation in Europe. All of that kind of starting after 9-11. I think there's a concern that Israel, in its very understandable uh, anger mm -hmm. in this situation, could end up doing things that are unwise. A hundred percent. Yeah. The difference is we didn't know where the terrorists are coming from. Right. And here we know exactly where they're at. What does a post-Hamas Gaza look like? I hope it's a flourishing, beautiful Singapore. Ever get the feeling that somebody's watching you? Like there's somebody else in the room. Now I know you're probably thinking, ooh, it's spooky Halloween time. You're just being paranoid. But this is actually real. Every single day there's actually somebody watching your every move. The worst part is you're even paying them to spy on you. That's someone who's your internet service provider. The company you pay for your internet, every website you visited late at night, what are they trying to say? How much time you've spent on each, they're keeping tabs on you, and that's why I use ExpressVPN. If you are using the internet at all, ExpressVPN is an app that allows you to, um, what it does is it scrambles the information, your router. People cannot identify these companies, these data harvesting, data mining operations cannot harvest your data. Hackers cannot steal your information. How many of us bank on our phone? How many of us have personal information on our phone? See, in the U.S., internet service providers are legally allowed to sell all of your users' browsing activity to advertisers. It's not just them. Your network admin, whether that's your school, workplace, parents, or whatever, can see everything you click on. That can be kind of hard to explain. But with ExpressVPN, 100% of your traffic is rerouted through their encrypted servers, so nobody can see a thing. And my favorite part is ExpressVPN is literally so simple to use. You can just open up the app, tap on the big button, and that's it. ExpressVPN works on all your devices, whether you browse the internet on your phone, tablet, computer, so you can use up to five devices at the same time under one ExpressVPN subscription. Stop letting people invade your privacy. Right now, get three extra months of ExpressVPN for free when you go to expressvpn.com slash timdillon. That's expressvpn.com slash timdillon. expressvpn.com slash timdillon to learn more.
the Singapore fuck? is lovely because the cane does work because you need a little something. <laughs> you do. You need a little something. I I hope they turn Palestine into a flourishing country side by side safely with Israel. Saudi Arabia and Israel were about to normalize Very relations. Cl- I mean, yeah, and that's This listen. was a big plan yep. for MBS, the new Middle East, the birthplace of Islam recognizing Israel's right to exist. Yep. Do you think that Hamas chose to act when they did? to destroy that plan? Yes, I yeah. think Iran did. Iran. Because, because, uh, Iran and Saudi Arabia don't really get along. They don't, the Sunnis and Shiites, they, they're they big, and they're arch enemies, bigger enemies than Israel, so they're using Hamas, so Iran is basically using Hamas. Hamas is also Sunni, right? right? So they're using Hamas, they're sacrificing Hamas in order to start a war with Israel, so the Sunni population in Saudi Arabia would be like, whoa, whoa, no, 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 we don't, we don't want peace with Israel. It's very important. This bond between Saudi Arabia, Israel, the United States is very important in order to alienate Iran and Russia and all the bad actors in the world, right? Everybody well, knows. Yes, but I, I also believe China can play a very constructive role in this. Will, will they though? I believe they could. Of course they could, but will and they? I, be- I believe that, listen, we could say bad actors and good actors, and I would agree with you probably on, on some of those things for sure. But I also think that we have to in order to avoid a larger war and more bloodshed, we have to enfranchise countries like China uh, to play a pr- productive role, hopefully. I'm all for it. You know? All for and it. I think China would want to. My godson is Chinese, and although he has choice words about Taiwan, he's three, but <laughs> he still, I think, can play a constructive role. You living in California, you live in a multi-ethnic place. I live in a multi-ethnic place. Um, you come in contact with people from all over the world. Mm-hmm. Do you have very interesting discussions, debates? I mean, is very this- interesting right. about this time? Look, it's it's because right now- you are now you have become the focal point of this campaign as somebody who's an advocate for Israel in the media. Yeah, and I imagine that there are people that. Not working for the Israeli government by in any way. Or no, you're just you're out there. with them. Don't. This is your nothing. homeland. It's what it's who you identify with. You're an Israeli person. It's not that's, just that. It's yeah. that Israel is the only country in the region that's that shares our values for real. It's the only true ally that we have over there. It's it's the stabilizing for force sure. In but the America region. has backed Saudi Arabia, and they have never shared our values. And America's been very cozy with them. So um, uh, Iran also was going to be a progressive country before the coup that sure. was sponsored by the British government, the American government, yeah. and, and their intelligence agencies. A lot of mistakes were made in A lot history. of mistakes were made. So I agree with you. I, I think there's a lot of backwards, uh, you know, countries in the Middle East that are incredibly oppressive. And unfortunately, if you look back at the history of who propped up some of those leaders, sure. it does lead of back. Of course. You know. Let me just say one word about Saudi Arabia, just for people that I know that have been there recently. Yeah. MBS is trying. 1,000%. actually trying. And, I, and people say I, that it's palatable on the street, that you see well, a I'm, difference yeah, when I'm, you go there. I'm hopeful. So. I'm a big fan of Saudi Arabia. Again, I live in Beverly Hills. They never had a vax mandate or a mask mandate. I felt like you know it was you know living in a place that you know was really cool. And I, I'm a big fan of that kind of Persian aesthetic of being, not that, you know, not Saudis Persian, are Persians, yeah. but like <laughs> that kind of very loud. All for the Persian that aesthetic. Loud that loud Arab. Not I under have, the I Ayatollahs have, though. I drive a Bentley. I have, you know what I mean? I, I <laughs> believe in that. That's the culture I believe in. I'm going to buy Trevor Noah's Rolls Royce, hopefully. I believe in their culture. <laughs> I believe in that culture of not only having it, but showing it. Dude, yeah. I drive a Prius. I'm like, literally, I know. Well, I'm the most- I mean, what, I mean, what are you? Produ- like, what are you producing in treatment? Like- of course, you drive a Prius. <laughs> what are you mentally ill? Um, but so, I'm, yeah. yeah. So let me ask you, Hollywood now, we, they got dueling letters, and I no one's asked me to sign either one. I'll get you on the right one. Can someone get me on a letter here? I'll get you on the right one. Well, you got one group of celebrities going, "Hey, ceasefire." You got one group of celebrities going, "Hey." Release the hostages. Release the hostages. Let's talk about the hostages. I agree with you. Let's do it. There now we know over two hundred and thirty men, women, children. There are thirty children under the age of sixteen, including a nine months old, a four years old, a twelve years old, a sixteen years yeah. old. They were taken from their homes, taken from their parents. Their parents shot in front of their faces and taken into Gaza. This is, this is. It's unheard of, yeah. and Hamas needs to release them immediately. Now, there is there is a a letter that was signed by 
the biggest names in Hollywood, like Katy Perry and Justin Timberlake and Madonna and 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 Orlando Bloom and Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Rock and a right. lot of people, Gal Gadot and Amy Schumer and a lot of people, Jerry Seinfeld and yes, uh, Tiffany Haddish, Haddish, and I can continue on and on. Haddish, and on. Haddish, I, know. I love this. <laughs> I know. I know. Tiffany Haddish, Haddish. Oh she's, boy, she's a parent. She's Jewish. Oh, she's lovely. Um, right. Signed, calling on the release of the hostages. We purposefully did not call for a ceasefire because you cannot expect Israel three weeks after the greatest slaughter of Jewish people since the Holocaust to all of a sudden go, oh, no, 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 stop, stop now. Right, right. You cannot call for it. Calling for it, it's like literally when America went after ISIS, we all agree that the world is a safer place because ISIS isn't in power anymore, right? ISIS right. hasn't taken over like hospitals and schools in, in various places around the Arab world. Right, not not slaughtering, beheading right. journalists. Right, but nobody was standing with a stopwatch with America and going, "When are you done? Okay, ceasefire now." Nobody. Uh, that's understood. So no calling for a ceasefire. Israel needs to be able to do whatever the fuck it needs the to do in order to ceasefire. I think solve this. I think what the ceasefire is, yeah, is people looking at uh -huh. what could. What, what they consider humanitarian catastrophe in no, Gaza. No, a lot of the people that, that were could, on that letter. Yeah, well, they have no uh, idea. Their publicist is going Not just out. that. A lot of the people on that letter have, a, they have an idea. Okay. And those are people that we know their names and they sign on to every anti-Israel shit that's out there. Okay. So we look like, oh, of course she's on it. Oh, of course she's on it. Yeah, of right. course. Like we know all these people are. It's not in like naming names. It's just that I've been in the in this work for a long time and I'm kind of like, yeah, Mark Ruffalo is always going to fucking be on the wrong side of history here. Always. Because he doesn't, literally doesn't understand the region. Well, so. But can't, and I don't know Mark Ruffalo at all and I'm sure I'd disagree with him on a lot of things. <laughs> I'm sure I would. Um, you know, can't so like I'm not naming names, but Mark Ruffalo. Sure, I don't even there, know if he signed on that letter, but he's I'm dead. sure. Is there space for someone to go? I believe Israel has a right to defend itself, um, and I believe Israel has a right to exist. But I feel like the military operation in Gaza will get to a point where casualty numbers will reach such a level mm -hmm. that it will not only hurt the ultimate cause because it will start turning Western countries against Israel because they'll go, there are so many casualties now and such a humanitarian situation and refugees pouring into other countries. Is there a room for that person who goes, I'm, I'm curious, I'm cautious about the course of action that Israel's I'm cautious taking. about the, the right. course of action. I'm the one that wants a humanitarian aid and not like people that aren't hurt to not get hurt more. Turn I'm off the, the one water who wants them to evacuate. Things, yeah. Have you seen what they're doing with the water pipes? I, they're making missiles. Thank you. Right. but the, They're pulling the, the, the water pipe. I'm, I'm saying stuff and people are going to think that I'm crazy, but no, just the, look it up. The, yeah, the you knew this. Tim just knew this. They, they yes. pull out the water they pipes from the, from the ground. Yeah. The water pipes that's supposed to bring water to their people and they turn them into rockets. Right. But the, two, like, mil the two million civilians that are being deprived of water, that is a huge sticking point for critics of Israel going, the electricity, the internet, the water. Absolutely. These, Why didn't they build their own water system, by the way? Or their own pipe? I mean, like do I know the? I don't know these I'm things. I'm just saying. Do that I this know is, why they didn't build their own water right system? This right now is a disaster. I'm trying Hamas to figure created. out Ozempic. I don't know <laughs> why. I don't even understand that. My friends, it looks better, but now like a, a little bit of an old witch. Here's what I'm saying. When you when there is this is a, this is again this yeah. is again a war that Israel didn't want. This is again a war right. that Israel didn't want. Right. I, I'm, it's and it's 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 just. It's just. I think the people that are concerned are concerned about the civilians and the way that they should be concerned about the hostages. I said, if you're calling for a ceasefire, you should also be calling for the re release of all hostages. All of them. Every single I one of them. I 100. I'm wearing agree a dog tag. You. If you want it, it says bring them home now. I 100 percent agree with. I don't really wear jewelry, oh, but okay. I agree with the sentiment. Yeah. But I 110 percent think all hostages should be released. Absolutely. It's it's just heartbreaking, and they're doing this psychological war, and which they're releasing two here and one there, and it's a fucking disaster. It really is, and everybody needs to call for that. So is don't Benjamin call Netanyahu um, has this hurt him politically? Has this helped him? Is this is this neutral? Well, it certainly didn't help him. I, he's the he's the man in charge. I the bottom line is this: I don't 
I don't think it's the time to talk politics right now. Right. If you uh, read between the lines of my work in the past 20 years, you know exactly what I think, what, where my policies are, more or less. Uh, it's not the time. Uh, he is in charge and was in charge for the last 15 or so years. Yeah. So it's always the responsibility of the CEO at the end of the day. Yeah. But it's not the time right now to discuss this. And I'm sure these conversations are to be had sure. after Israel gets it. People that say that Israel doesn't have objective. a right to exist yeah. are not, in my mind, serious people. But I do know that there's a lot of them. Watch the comments that you're going to be getting. Oh, I'll get a lot. You're going to get so much hate and you're going to get, get so much lot. free Palestine. But and we have Israel. Next week we have fuck. Hezbollah is coming. Oh, fabulous. It's so good. we have, Just ball, we yeah. have everybody. Yeah, that's great. No, but I, 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 awesome. I will say, listen. My next guest. Right. <laughs> my, my. Khaled Mash'al. <laughs> straight I, from Doha. Right. Now, what about Qatar? That's interesting. You know, Qatar is this kind of, you know, somewhat westernized country that's like, go and give us a World Cup, do this, do that. And Hamas is living there in the Four Seasons. So I prefer um, uh, Hania, Ismail Hania and and uh, and uh, Khaled Masha are living in Doha than living in Tehran, honestly. Okay. Because there's somewhat is, probably a couple of other eyes on them there. Rather than in Tehran, they'll just be lost in fuck knows where. Right. Um, I think that Qatar's role is going to be very interesting. Obviously, Qatar has been extremely involved in releasing the four hostages that were released up until now. And I can only say that I hope they play an even bigger role. I hope that the brutality of this attack shocked a lot of people in the Arab world as well. I know that to be, um, to be the case because I see the reports. And I hope this realigns the region in a way that's uh, prosperous and better for the citizens of the region. And Qatar has a big role to play here. So. What is the solution, do you think, and I mean this is asking you to maybe predict the future, but how do we move towards a situation in Israel with the Palestinians where we I, can, yeah. I would like some responsible Palestinian leadership because the Palestinian leadership as a national movement needs to figure out what it is that they want and what it is that they're after. They need to unite. Is Mahmoud Abbas still involved? Mahmoud Abbas is involved. He's the head of the PA. He's completing a 16-year term of a four-year term. Of sentence? No, of, of being in power. Right. There's been no elections. Yeah, you know. So he right. was elected for four-year term and is completing his 16th year. Um, but he he is the more moderate, and he, I mean, other than being a Holocaust denier every now and then, and saying something stupid about the Holocaust, they, the Palestinian people, as a national movement. So what does he say about the Haggis? That it didn't happen? Yeah, yeah. It's a whole thing. He had a thesis about the It was a whole thing. Okay. But they need to figure out what it is that they want. And I would like to see the American left and American progressives, instead of engaging in stupid virtue signaling, on online stupid virtue signaling activism, and bashing Israel, how about holding the Palestinians accountable too? Because they think that I'm such a great social justice warrior and I go, Israel's terrible. Well, yeah, they don't care about social justice. They seem to care about power. Uh, you know, women are being raped. You're not hearing about that. You know, you're not hearing about the heinous crimes that Hamas committed. It's they literally seem to care about cutting, power. It's cutting about a power babies, dynamic. Cutting babies' yeah. heads is not as bad as cutting Gaza's internet. Like people are up in yeah. arms about the internet being cut up. I'm like there were babies that were being cut in half. Right. I think I think what people are saying is if you cut off water and you cut off electricity and you cut off the internet, you you have a situation where you're going to have, you know, I understand tens of thousands of people. It's dying. horrific, but you have to understand Israel is not responsible for the citizens of Gaza. Hamas is responsible for the citizens of Gaza. Right, but Israel is taking certain steps to. I don't you know, know exactly where yeah. we're at right now. Israel's always trying to have as little amount of casualties as possible, and Hamas is trying to have as many of them as possible. I understand that people might look at it and think of me as some mouthpiece of the Israeli government. Look me up and know that it's not the case. But I'm just saying, there's there's right or wrong in the world, and Israel and the Jewish people have a right for a tiny state. What, in, in closing, and I do appreciate yeah. you kind of coming on and laying this out, because I do think that there's a lot of people that don't have a full understanding of you know, what's going on and they're just hearing snatches from this part one. And especially and that one. when social media is flooded, number one, because we're again, 0.18% or zero, less than what It just seems to a lot of people of that population. think about Gaza and yep. they go, these people are living in a hell. Yep. And there are Israeli guards on the, you know, on standing there with guns. 
Yeah. Uh, there have been instances of, of, of young Palestinians being killed. You know why they're guards? Yeah. Because, again, I'm right. going to say this again, because that's historical. Like, yeah. That's what happened. Right. In 2005, Israel unilaterally pulled out of Gaza, handed the keys over to the Palestinians. Hamas took over Gaza yeah. in a coup d'etat, killed the Palestinians people. Palestinians literally threw them off the rooftops and dragged, like, tied them into cars and drove them through the streets. Took over Gaza, killed the Palestinian Authority people, and basically has been holding Gazan prisoners ever since. So free Gaza indeed. Free Gaza from Hamas. It's a no. terrorist organization. It's the Taliban. It's as if you're saying, I, I support Afghan people, then I support the Taliban. Right. Like, I, those I organizations, those groups, those most movements. Most people that are critical of, you know, outside of the people that are just openly anti-Semitic, there are a lot of them. There's, There's elected leaders in America that True are that. openly anti-Semitic, right? True that. Um, and anti-everybody. Anti-white men, anti-this, anti-that, anti-everything. And they're they're very vocal about it. Everything is, you know... Um, but there are people that are, well, it's true. It, it is. I'm just it's laughing true. because you find, you know, today with the, how communications work, you find well, a lot of the same people that when, a, when, when people have been saying, Hey, the colleges are getting a little crazy. A lot of the liberals that are now calling that out had ignored it for years totally and said it. everybody was uh, overstating it. And, and everybody they were has the right for their opinion being, and everybody dramatic. has the right so, to speak. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but they're not speaking. They're calling for a massacre. There are this people that like, are genuinely anti-Semitic. There are people that say there is not, not a justification for the attack, but there is a context with we, with what we can put all of these things it's into. It's an excuse. It's not context, please. But Hamas it's not, is it's not, not looking... Hamas is not It's looking. not Hamas per se. It's that you have this thing. If I could think of a place to grow terrorists, it would be Gaza. If I could design a place where terrorists would become terrorists, mm -hmm. it would be a place like Gaza. Is that not true? Right. Right. And that's because they took over by force. Literally, they have been controlling that place. They're not interested. They're not even interested in the lives of Palestinian people. I don't know what's hard to understand here. No. They're just they're just not. For sure. But but the fact that they are occupying this small sliver of Palestine. By the way, that's a go good anywhere. way. That's the way to put it. Hamas is occupying Gaza. Israel's not occupying Gaza. Right, but Israel is enforcing the the blockade, the blockade, and, and Egypt and as preventing well. a lot of things from getting into Gaza, and has for a long time. And Egypt as well, because they're terrorists. Yeah. <laughs> that so the blockade that Israel put on on Gaza uh, periodically is always put on by Egypt as well. So, it, but nobody talks about that. That there was a yeah. blockade of both these countries, one Arab, one Jewish, kind of going, Hamas is fucked and we need to contain them and we can't let them just get cement because they're building tunnels. We can't just let them get uh, gasoline because they're stockpiling it. And we, they, the, they're, they're taking the shit from their people in right. order to fire. It's, isn't, it, isn't it curious for people that Hamas is literally, that Gaza is running out of everything except rockets? Well, they that's, keep throwing. Yeah. They, there was an attack on Tel Aviv today. Every, this is the other thing that you have to understand: the war didn't just this thing didn't just happen on October seventh and ended. It wasn't one day. There were eight terrorists that were caught yesterday trying to get in through the ocean. There were four that were trying to get through the north, and there are rockets that are being launched at Israel all the time. You also have Hezbollah still, in Lebanon as well. Yes, still today, I'm talking to my sister, and she's like, "Oh shit, siren!" I'm on. I'm like, "Oh my god!" And she's in Tel Aviv. So right. this is ongoing. They right. haven't stopped. Right. But people are going to Israel. No, 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 no. Israel, ceasefire. Stop. Israel, please stop. And right. by now, we're like, we can't listen to what we, Israel can do no right. Okay? People are always going to have a yeah. problem with it. And by now, it's like, we just better fucking do what we need to do. Because they're going to say shit anyways. I'm just hoping that this... Uh has a as an end game and a and a you know what I mean because I, I'm speaking from experience of being a citizen of a country that went on a very long uh you know very convoluted uh path after 9 11 and yeah. it we ended up spending a lot of money By the I, way, don't, I don't think we made after, anyone safer after 9 11 I was like you know young and all that but as an Israeli I was watching the US going into Iraq and right. I'm like what the fuck are you doing it's Iran like yeah. we knew that Iran is the destabilizing uh, um, entity in the region. You look back at every shit that's happening in the world, every terrorist, every everything. It's all it all leads back to Iran. How did the Mossad miss the this attack? Oh God, nobody knows. There's there was supposedly there was the, so many one of the best intelligence agencies in the world. There was so Mossad isn't external though. Mossad is not technically. 
look, there were so well, it's many. It's like the CIA is technically down. external. Check we all know it's technically ever, everything's external. There was. How did the Americans miss it? How did everybody miss this? It was. Um, there was a major meltdown. I'm. Yeah. Well, I don't know if the Americans clear. have the uh, have the human intelligence on the right. ground that Mossad right. does. We have great satellites. It's we becoming, know that. We know now. We're we're starting to become. We're we're, we're starting to kind of break down backwards. The moves that they did and um they were look again really good effort good effort hamas you're not winning this one either but right. good effort right well no done, we, we listen we don't nobody i don't think we, nobody wants hamas to win except aoc <laughs> she does but um no look, did you see my face how i didn't move yeah of course try no. ilhan omar see what my face does or she no, i mean leave. listen they don't they don't seem to love the jews i mean that's just what it is you know i mean that doesn't but she also aoc she you got to respect the ones that come right out and say it. AOC like pretended to be Jewish once, which I don't have a respect for. She was like, I'm like, I started doing it up. I did a thing about it years ago. I just come out and say what you believe. That's what I respect about you. I respect that about what Schumer's doing. Again, I'm a Long Island guy, c Catholic. Didn't grow up with this around the dinner table. This was not discussed. We heard about it. Right. But we, we didn't have an intimate involvement. I had friends that went on birthright. I have friends that are more well versed in it. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's a lot of Muslim comedians that are talking about it. I know that there's a lot of Jewish comedians that are talking about it. I know that it's split a lot of people and it's been a very contentious thing. If you support democracy, freedom of speech, human rights, women's rights, LGBTQ plus rights, any kind of rights that we hold dear and you do not support Israel within the context of the Middle East, you're a fucking idiot. I think you should support Israel within the context of the Middle East, but I also think you should support the idea that we need to eventually, you know, bring an end to the suffering I and the, in his, the death of innocent people, yeah. and we need to somehow figure out some type of self determination for Palestinians 100%. and a life and a life for them outside of Gaza, um, which is a a training camp that grows extremism and terrorism. I'm pro-Israeli and also pro-Palestinian, and these, these two things are not mutually exclusive. It's only on the American uh, uh, fringes that it's presented as mutually exclusive. By the way, almost all of these towns in Kibbutzim on the, on the south and the party, the Nova party, the slaughter at the party, all these people are peace activists, pacifists, left wing. Right. There was an old lady that was in charge of flying kites Every, you know, there was on the 7th of October at 4 p.m. They yeah. had this thing that they all got together and flew kites into Gaza to show them how much they love them. Like all these people are like the lefties. Right. And they're now hostages and were slaughtered in Gaza. So I'm all for that. Again, Palestinian people need to be a little bit more responsible and acknowledge that Israel's there and Israel's there to stay and stop trying to slaughter the Jews because it ain't going to work. All right. Well, Noah Tishby, where can people follow you and get your uh, get this uh, information? All social medias. And my best one, biggest one, is uh, the one that I'm most active on is is Instagram at Noah Tishby, and my book is available wherever. Okay. Are hopefully, you, uh, we uh, will be back on Instagram. We were we were we were suspended temporarily for doing a video saying that Pizza Hut supported Hamas. <laughs> oh my God. Noah Did Tishby. They? Well, no, it was just <laughs> we do. Wait. We, no. I'm not a. Big well, pizza fan anyways. but her, Write them you know. down. Get that. Put Pizza Hut on the list. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate, Appreciate it, of that. course. Thank you.